When was the last time you changed the transmission oil on your vintage VW? And yes, I know it's technically a transaxle, so you can stop writing that comment right now. On my 1973 Super Beetle here, I know it's been at least 20 years because the car sat in storage for 20 years before I bought it. I'm going to show you how to change it, and it's actually pretty easy if you have the right tools. Like I said, this is a 1973 Super Beetle, so I can't guarantee other years or models will be exactly the same, but they should be pretty similar. Now, let's talk about what you need to do this job. There are a couple different ways to do this. A one way uses a funnel and a long tube to fill the transmission. But I think the way I'm going to show you is a lot easier, and here's what you'll need. I'll put Amazon links down below in the description to all these things. First up is the oil. People love to argue about transmission oil online, so there's a lot to read about it if you want to. The simple answer is you want GL4 rated oil. Some GL5 oils are okay if they specifically say they're safe for yellow metals in the transmission, like brass and bronze. And some people online argue GL5 is fine, but I'm going with what's safe and getting a GL4 oil. This is not a very expensive one. I paid about $30 for this gallon of stay lube. You need 2.5 liters, so if you buy three quarts, you'll have plenty. Rather than the hose method I talked about before, I like to use these gear oil pumps that screw onto the bottle. They just make it so much easier to fill the transmission. For tools, you'll need a 17 millimeter hex tool. You could use a 17 millimeter Allen wrench, but I personally like these sockets that you can use on a ratchet. And of course, a ratchet and some extensions. This is a six inch extension. And for those of you who are interested in tools, this is a nice extra long, a three eighth inch drive Williams ratchet. Williams is an industrial brand made by Snap-on. Uh, this ratchet's pretty affordable. I've had it for several years and I really like it. And a torque wrench is a good idea so that you know the drain and fill plugs are torqued properly. This is a nice made in the USA CDI one, but if you're looking for a more affordable option, I personally like the Tecton torque wrenches. The first step is to safely jack the vehicle up and put it on jack stands. You always want to start by removing the fill plug here uh, because it would be a major bummer to remove the drain plug, drain out the oil, then find out the fill plug is stuck and you can't refill it. I'm also going to scrape some of the crud out of here so that my uh, socket fits a little bit better. So I have my ratchet, an extension, and the socket. It's not super easy to do this with the camera in the way, but I'm going to try to loosen it up. I'm moving the camera a little bit because it's exactly blocking where I need to reach. All right, that came out without too much trouble. There it is, fill plug is out. I'm back under the car here, I have my drain pan in place, and here is the drain plug I need to remove. And I am using a shorter extension this time. This one feels tighter actually than the fill plug was, but it's still coming out okay. And there we go. Man, that oil smells really bad. So now you just let this drain. Here's the drain plug and there was just like a half inch of mucky sludge on top of it that you can see here after I removed it. This is also a magnetic drain plug. So there is a, some metal shavings stuck here on uh, the magnet. I'm not too concerned about this because this oil is uh, at minimum 20 years old. And I'm guessing there's so much gunk in this because everything that would normally be suspended in the oil settled to the bottom over those 20 years. When I drained the oil, it actually looked kind of clear, but uh, there's all this gunk here built up uh, on the drain plug and in the bottom of the transmission. So what I'm planning to do is after I get the car up and running, I'll drive it a little bit, make sure all the uh, gunk in the transmission is mixed up and suspended in the oil, then I'll drain it and change it again. Now that it is drained, it's time to reinstall the drain plug and torque it to 14 foot-pounds. Now I have the pump in the jug of gear lube and the hose leading into the fill hole in the transmission. Now all I have to do is pump it until it starts to run out, which is how we know it's full. 
but don't pump it too fast. If you do that, it can start overflowing even though the transmission isn't actually full. You can see there that the oil is starting to run out of the fill hole a little bit, and I can actually see in there and see it's even with the hole, so this is full. Now reinstall the fill plug, torque it to 14 foot-pounds, and you're done. So there you have it. It's actually a pretty easy job. What do you think? Do you have any tips for doing this job? Let me know in the comments down below, and while you're down there, don't forget to hit that like button and that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.